I love, love, love cables of any kind and I'm a big fan of eyelets as well as stitch patterns that create fabrics that look good on both sides. Hey, it's Denise from Lumahead.com and I brought in all of those things into a very elegant, slightly oversized men's scarf. So let me tell you what you're gonna need to create this beauty. You're gonna need a large gauge loom, any shape with at least 35 pegs, your hook, 313 yards of worsted weight yarn, scissors, needle, and cable or stitch holder, and if you'd like a crochet hook. All right, without further ado, let's begin the eyelet and cable scarf pattern. All right, so we're knitting with a single strand of worsted weight yarn. I'm going to secure mine to the anchor peg using a simple knot. You can use a slip knot if you're more comfortable. And then we're going to wrap, completely wrap all 35 pegs. Now I'm using this kind of cast on but you could use any cast on that you're comfortable with. I need to tighten my uh, cast on stitch and so that's why I do it this way. And um, I'll give you options to different cast on in the description below. All right, once you've done your 35 pegs, then we're gonna turn around. Right there on peg 35, you turn direction and we're gonna half wrap and knit off in order to do a U-wrap knit stitch. Again, that's a half wrap, and then we're gonna knit off. Now, I know you guys see a lot of stitch markers here, and I'll explain later, because uh, I not only have stitch markers, but I have two levels of stitch markers. And for those of you that have experience with me, um, I'm going in a different direction. We're going kind of conventional on this pattern, which is why I went left instead of my usual right. All right, so once um, you have knit off that peg 35, you're done with the cast on. Now before I go to row one, let me go ahead and explain this first layer of uh, stitches, which are every four pegs, if you notice. Um, and I'm using the locking stitch markers because I can just take these off. And I wanted to cast on first so you could see that I take it off and I put the stitch marker right back on without ever having to remove uh, the yarn off of the pegs. And putting them in this direction is what makes that easy. All right, so now that you know that, let's go ahead and start with row one where you're going to knit to purl to until the last three stitches. So you're basically repeating that knit to purl to until you get to the last three stitches. Okay, so you guys know how to do the knit to where it's that you wrap, so you half wrap. And this is, I'm using a flat stitch here. They're interchangeable for me. Um, so you wrap or flat. And then we're gonna go to those two purl stitches. So put your yarn under your existing loop, scoop it up, create a new loop, take the old loop off, put that new loop on, and pull on the working yarn to tighten your stitch. And you're gonna do two of those. So you see the little uh, marker before the knit to purl to, right? And then within parentheses, you see the instruction until the last three stitches, right? So you're gonna repeat those knit to purl to again and again and again. You have 35 pegs. Well, really you have 34 pegs where you're gonna do the, I'm sorry, you have 32 pegs where you're gonna do the knit to purl to and then those last three is where that stitch pattern then changes. But until you get, until you've done those knit two purl twos until the last three, which is right here, this is where it changes. You're gonna do one purl stitch and two knit stitches, you wrap or flat, whatever you prefer. In this direction, I happen to prefer flat stitch. Not a big deal, either one will work fine. Now for row two, you're going to first knit to purl three and then do that double rib 
stitch pattern which is a no knit to purl to you're going to continue to do that till you get to the last two stitches and on the last two you're going to do two knit stitches so let's start first i'm going to do these two knit stitches and um don't get concerned that i did them out of order right it doesn't matter just knit two and then you're going to purl three so put your yarn under the existing loop scoop up create a new loop take the old one off put the new one on and pull that's your purl stitch that was one for me here's two and then here's the third stitch and then you're going to do that double rip stitch pattern after those three purls where you're going to knit two purl two and you're going to continue to do that until you get to those last two stitches right so knit two purl two and then um you're going to knit two now when i say that i use them interchangeably it's not that it never matters whether you use a u-wrap or a flat there are some patterns where using the u over the flat is important right so please don't take it as though i'm saying that it doesn't matter you can always interchange them always follow the designer's um legend so they tell you that the knit is a flat or it's a u do that in my in my case in this pattern it's not really going to matter all right so continue the pattern until the last two stitches where you're going to knit two so here I am at the end of the row. I'm going to do these last two knit stitches. And because I have two rows and my yarn is secure, I'm going to go ahead and take the knot off the anchor peg. All right, so for rows three and four, all you're going to do is repeat rows one and two. So first you're going to do the knit two, purl two until the last three stitches and then do a purl one knit two and then for row four you're going to repeat row two which is a knit two purl three and then knit two purl two until the last two stitches where you're going to knit those last two stitches okay so as i was going through the video i just thought about the fact that i never told you why i had put these locking stitch markers that were temporary instead of some that would stay on and that's because this is just for my border um, if you're new to me, I have a mild case of ADD and it's very hard for me to keep up with my stitch patterns. And so for the border, which is different than when I do the cable stitches, is why I put those temporary locking stitch markers. All right, so now I take them off and I am going to focus now on my cables. I want you to see specifically what you're going to be working on in, with the next six uh, rows and that's this section right here that is the cable portion and we're going to start off with row five and for row five you're going to start with an edge of five pearls so always on the odd numbers from row five to ten you're always going to start with these five pearls then the pattern goes to a knit four purl three until the last two stitches so you guys already know how to do five pearls i don't need to explain this right five pearls is your edge and like i was explaining the cable portion is a six row repeat of which this is the first row so pay attention to row five and like I said, it's an odd number. So when you're going in this direction, that edge is five pearls. And hopefully that will help you stay on track. Then you're going to go to the next repeat, which is the knit four purl three until the last two stitches where you're going to purl. So remember that I told you that that second row of stitch markers was my cable portion. So those four knit stitches are where I'm going to be doing my cables. That's why I have those stitch markers right where I have them that's going to help me with that so knit four purl three to the last two stitches where you're going to do two purl stitches next for row six which is an even number in that six row repeat you're going to start the edge with the knit two purl three and then your knit four purl three repeat until the last two stitches where you will do two knit stitches right 
So we're going to start with those knit two purl three, that knit two purl three edge, right, on row six as you're coming in that direction. And after you do your knit two purl three, then you're going to do the repeat, which is knit four purl three, knit four purl three until the last two stitches. And as you guys continue your repeat, I want to take the time to say thank you to Carol Maple from PromiseLearningATL.com, Elise Petron, Penny Pitchard, Kristen Stone, Barbara Ledger, and Joel Gittleman for covering the cost of closed captioning. Thank you so, so very much. Okay, now you're free to end your row with those two knit stitches. We're moving on to row seven, which is an odd number in that six row pattern. And so we're going to start with that five purl uh, edge. And then you're going to do the repeat, which is the knit four purl three, continuing until you get to the last two pegs where you're going to knit two purl stitches. So we already know how to do the purl. Um, so I'm not going to repeat that. So here go my five pearls, which again, it's because I'm on an odd number of my six row pattern repeat. And then I'm going to do the knit four purl three. So you continue all the way till you get to those last two. And when you do that, you're going to do two purl stitches. And remember that these four knit right here, those are going to be your cable knit stitches. All right, that's why you're repeating it because the number of times that you're doing this four stitch repeat is going to be that cable. All right, you're gonna reach the end and you're gonna do two purl stitches and that's the end of row seven. For row eight, things are gonna change just a little bit, right? In that, It'll stay the same in that you're going to do that knit two purl three as an edge first, uh, as an even row that you're knitting. And then right here is where things change because now you have a E-wrap four purl three, knit four purl three, which is different. Now what you're going to repeat is 14 stitches twice instead of just seven stitches, which is what you were doing before. You will repeat those and then and the last two stitches two stitches you would knit. Now you're going to do the E-wrap four, purl three, knit four, purl three until the last two stitches. So let's start off with the edge. Um, again, this is an even row, so we're going to do knit two, purl three. That's the edge. And by the way, you might hear one of my cats in the background. It's, um, it's our way of life. What can I say? And then we're going to switch to that repeat. And here is an E-wrap, where you completely wrap the peg. So you're going to E-wrap four of them, completely wrap, and then knit off. And I always knit off first, the one that I wrap last. So I'm going to follow that with three purl stitches. This is the, the part between the cables. That's what you're doing when you do these purl stitches. And then we're going to knit four. And again, um, you can use the flat or the U-wrap. I'm using the flat. It's just more comfortable to me. And all of these, right, you're going to go ahead and do the, the three purl stitches. And all of those you're going to repeat. You're going to repeat the E-wrap for four, purl three, knit four, purl three. So here are my last purl threes and then I'm going to repeat that right e-wrap purl knit purl and then end the row with two knit stitches y'all got this I'm just repeating myself because it's what I do but I know you guys got this because it's um because it's written and by the way uh you don't have to write all this down you could just get a um Mm, a written pattern in my store and I'll put a, a link in the description. I always price my patterns real reasonable so that you can buy them and I can continue doing this kind of work. So I try to make it as much a win-win situation as I can. If you don't want to spend the money then you know you could just write the pattern as we work but if you don't want to do that 
just follow the link in the description all right and with those two knit stitches and you're done with this row so row nine is the serious business this is you know the big leagues where the diva sings and i need you to pay real close attention right we're gonna do those five pearls as the edge because this is an odd number and then we're gonna e-wrap three pearl three cable right cable left pearl three until the last two stitches and then we'll pearl those last two stitches so i'm gonna walk you through slowly the cable right cable left and i don't want you to be worried about this because i know for a fact you can handle this so let's start with those pearl stitches which if you're on row nine you're a pearl stitch expert no need to worry and then you're going to wrap those four pegs and then knit off for those first four e-wrap knit stitches and again the three pearls that go in between the cables all right so pearl one two and three and now we're going to work the cable stitch and we're going to start off with the cable right and it's we're going to do it over two pegs so this peg here on the right is going towards the left and the peg on the left is going to go towards the right and that one is the one that you want to dominate you want it to show up this one goes in the background so what you do first is that you take your holder your stitch holder whatever you're using and you take the cable on the right and you put it on the stitch holder and you're going to put it in the back and hold it with your fingers with your hand you can close the stitch marker if you want to and just take it out of the way and then you're going to take the loop that's on the left you're going to unravel that loop and then mount it on the peg on the right that's the first one and then you're going to take the one that you put on the cable holder unravel it and then put it on the left because this is a cable right and you want the stitch that went towards the right to be the one that shows up and you can see that right here you see that the that the stitch that went towards the right is in front of the stitch that's on the left you want that one to be in the background and so now we go to the next two because we're going to now do cable left so the cable the peg that's on the right is going to the left the one on the left is going towards the right and you want the one on the left to be the one to show up so the first thing you do is that you take off the one that's on the left because it's going to go towards the right it's always the opposite just keep that in mind okay so we're going to take the stitch that is on the left off the peg unravel it and hold it in the background however works comfortable for you i just hold it with my fingers and then you're going to take the loop off the peg on the right and put it on the peg on the left this will become the dominant stitch that you will see and then you take the one that's on the cable and you place it on the peg now of the four stitches this is the one that's going to give you a hard time you know it just it just doesn't want to cooperate manhandle it get that stitch back on that peg and you're good all right and ladies don't get sensitive because i said that okay y'all know me all right last thing you're going to do is you're going to knit off those four pegs the ones where you just did the cable right and the cable left you're going to knit them off and i'm going to be honest uh you know it's pretty tight but you can handle this and it's so worth it so if it's tight just pull on it get it over uh by the way wool uh, stretches better this is acrylic but i wanted this yarn and so it is what it is all right then we're going to purl three which remember it's always those three stitches that are in between the cables so purl three and then we're going to repeat again so just like before we're going to e-wrap four pegs so wrap your pegs i wrap all four of them and then go back and knit off all four of them so those are my four e-wraps i'm then going to uh purl stitch 
those three pegs. So one, two, three. It's that it's that little bit of space between the cables. And now I'm going to do again my cable right. So I'm going to start with those first two pegs and take the, the stitch off the peg on the right, unravel it, and hold it in the background. Take the stitch off the peg on the left, unravel it, and bring it towards the right because that's the first one I want to show up. And then take the one that's on my stitch holder and put it on the left. It sits in the background and like I said, it just kind of supports. And then we're gonna go cable left. So the next two pegs. So take the stitch off the peg on the left. Always, if it says left, take the stitch off the peg on the left. If it says cable right, take the stitch off the cable on the right, okay? Then we're gonna take the stitch off the cable that was on the right, bring it towards the left as the not dominating one, and then put the one on the right to, towards the left in the background. Like a background singer and a lead singer, right? And then you're gonna knit off those four pegs. So again, they're kinda tight. Don't worry about it. I know you can handle this. I do, I'm do. i using U-wrap knit stitches uh, instead of the flat because it's a little looser. And the more you curve your yarn, the looser the stitch will be. All right, then you're going to do those uh, three purls. We're now at the end, right? Three purls. And the last thing you're going to do at the end of row nine is that you will then purl those last two stitches. So here's my one purl. Here is my purl number two. And I finished row nine. I'm now going to row 10, right? So I'm turning directions. For row 10, I am then going to knit two, purl three. This is an even number row. And then I'm going to do the knit four, purl three, cable left, cable right, purl three, until the last two stitches and then I'm gonna knit those last two stitches. This is the last row in your six row repeat. And I'll explain what that means in case that's a bit confusing. Just hang tight with me. I'm gonna walk you through all of it. All right, so first knit those first two, purl your next three, and then we're gonna get to that repeated stitch pattern, which by the way, you repeat two times here, all right? So first we do those four knit stitches then we're gonna do three purl stitches. And that's gonna be followed by cable left, cable right. We're gonna start with the left one, right? This one right here. We're gonna go that one towards the right. So the first thing you're gonna do is take the cable off the left peg and unravel it. Remember, that's always the one you take off first. If it's a cable left, you're gonna take the one off the left first. And then take the one on the right, the peg on the right, take it off. We're working with two pegs here. And take the cable on the right to the, um, the stitch on the right to the peg on the left, because it's the dominant one you want it to show up. And then take the one that was on the stitch marker, which was the left one, it is the background stitch and it's gonna be placed on the peg on the right. It's cable left, so I want the stitch that was going to the left to be in the front and the stitch that's going to the left in the background, and they're always opposite. So now we're gonna do the cable right. So the first thing you do is take, take the one off that's on the peg on the right, take it off, right, and bring the left one to the right. It's, it, you want it going in the direction that it's saying cable right, that's the, the, pe the peg on the left is gonna go to the right and the peg on the right is gonna go to the left. So always remember that you take off the stitch that is on the word. So this is a cable right, take the stitch off the peg that's on the right, hold on to it and then take the stitch that's on the left off the peg unravel it and bring it towards the right now I dropped it here and you know stuff like that happens no worries and I was gonna edit this but I want y'all to see um, when I have difficulties 
with something I like you guys to see it so you see that I don't panic I go real slow and I go back and hunt my my stitch and I go get it all right so then I brought that stitch from the left to the right and the stitch that I dropped and almost lost is right here and that fourth stitch is always the tough one it's just it just does not want to cooperate it just doesn't so put energy in there don't worry I know the concern is that your yarn is gonna break this is red heart it's really strong yarn and uh, so I feel comfortable with it all right now I'm going to knit off those four pegs where I did the cables and now I'm going to purl three because I did those those four stitches which were my cable and there's always three pearls between one set of cable and the next one okay so now I'm gonna repeat and we're going to repeat by knitting one two three four and now we're gonna purl three one two three and now we're gonna do our set of cables. So we're gonna do cable left first, and then cable right. So you know that you're gonna take the loop off the peg on the left, and then put it in the back, because you're repeating it twice. All right, so take the correct loop off, which is the left one, with your holder or whatever you have, put it in the background and hold on to it, unraveled, and then take the one on the right and bring it to the left because that's the dominant one, the one that's traveling in the, in the direction going left. And then take the loop that you have on your stitch holder and put it to the right in the background because that's not the one you want to show up. Do the same thing again, this time on the right. You're going to take the, the peg off because you're going to bring it, you know, left, right, right, left always in the opposite direction so since this is a cable right I'm going to first take the loop off the peg that's on the right because that one's going in the direction of the left isn't this nice and confusing but you know what I'm saying you you can see it right so I put the the loop from the peg on the left to the right it's the dominant one and the one that needs to show up and then remember that the fourth one is always complicated wow you know, it just, it is what it is. And um, sometimes I would just take, instead of the hook, sometimes, believe it or not, I would just use my finger uh, to help it to, to land where it needs to land. Uh, but yeah, it can be kind of scary once you've worked on this for hours and hours and then it does this thing where it just does not want to cooperate so here I am struggling and I thought you guys should see this because I'm not going to give up and I don't want you to either when you find yourself struggling to put this this uh, last of the four right there's four pegs with these stitches that last one always gives you a hard time I don't want you to give up I didn't give up so I didn't want to edit this out I wanted you to see me struggle with that last one but I finished my scarf and you can too don't let the fact that these stitches are tight worry you the um, red heart super saver jumble acrylic which most people you know if you're a yarn snob you don't like this idea but this this made it it made it through all of my rows and i didn't break my yarn at all not once all right so i finished my cables i knit off and then i'm going to do my three purl stitches and then right and then you're going to end with two knit stitches now while you do that while you purl and then knit i want to take this the these few seconds to say thank you to lorena ruiz mi hermana for always supporting this channel and me not just financially but um with a lot of encouragement and inspiration gracias hermana Okay, you guys, last two um, pegs. You're going to knit off. You know how to do this, so I don't need to show you. You're now going to do the six-row repeat. In my particular case, I repeated those six rows 83 
times. So rows 5 through 10, that's one repeat. You do it again, 5 through 10, that would be a second repeat. So you're doing, if you want to do what I did, you would do 83 repeats. And I want you to keep in mind that every repeat, every six rows that you knit are going to increase your scarf by 1.25 inches. And that's after blocking. And I will explain blocking uh, later on in this uh, video. But the more you repeat, the bigger it is, okay? In my particular case, doing those 83 repeats with the borders uh, and the first set of cables, I got a scarf after blocking that was 10 inches wide and 112 inches um, long. So again, all you have to do is if you want it to be shorter, then instead of doing 83 um uh, repeats of those six rows you can do say 70 or, or 60 or whatever right multiply it do the math figure out how long you want it and repeat the six rows accordingly so as your scarf gets longer i want you to be aware of what the scarf is going to look like it's going to look more like this than the picture that you saw at the beginning so i don't want you to freak out when you look at your project and it looks like this this is what it looks like before you've blocked it it's gonna look like that after you finish your scarf and you do the technique of blocking which i will show you later on in the video now once you're done with those repeats the last cable has uh, the top on finish so we're gonna do rows 509 and 5010 and for that you're going to do for 509 Purl five because it's an odd number. That's your edge, and then you're gonna knit four purl three into the last two, and then you're gonna purl two more. For ten, you're gonna do your edge, which is the new two, knit two purl three, and then you're gonna knit four purl three into the last two, and for those you're gonna knit two. Now let me show you how to do those rows without even looking at the pattern. If you mark your loom, it's gonna be super easy to do this, and let me show you how. So you're going from right to left. You're going to start off with that five purl edge. Then where you marked for your cables, you're doing four knit stitches. In between knit stitches, you always have those three purls. So there's no stitch marker, three purls. That's going to be followed again by those four knit, then purl, then four knits, then three purls. And you see where I marked, I'm doing knits. So four knits, and then I'm going to end that with those basically five pearls, right? When it's time to turn around to do five, you're doing your edge. When you're going from left to right, you're doing two knit stitches, two purl stitches, that's your edge. And then you've marked for those four knits, then the three pearls, which you're gonna repeat. And you see I've marked my knits, no markings for my pearls. And that's what I'm saying. You don't even need to know the pattern if you've marked the loom. It makes it super easy. You're going to end with those two knit stitches. That's the only ones that I haven't marked, but you end with two knit stitches on, your, um, on those. Then you can do rows 511 and 512, which are exactly like the last two that you did. So just repeat the same actions from 509 and 510. You repeat them for 511 and 512. Now rows 513 and 514 are actually your second border. They're your other end uh, where you're ending this um, scarf. And we're gonna be doing a double rib stitch like we did at the beginning, now at the end. So for 513, you're gonna knit two purl two. That's going from right to left. And until the last three, and then you're gonna purl one, knit two. And then from the other corner, coming from the other end, going from uh, left to right, you're gonna knit two, purl three, and then do that knit two, purl two until the last two stitches. For rows 515 and 516, you're doing exactly the same thing you did for the last two rows which were uh, 
5, uh, 13, and 14, exactly the same thing. For 5, 15, you're going to knit 2, purl 2, until the last 3. We're going to knit purl 1, knit 2. And then for 5, 16, you're going to start with the edge of the knit 2, purl 2, and then do that double rib, which is knit 2, purl 2, until the last 2 when you knit 2. All right, so you knit the last row, and now you're going to take the working yarn, and you're going to wrap it around your loom at least one and a half times. I did two. It was kind of like an overkill, and then cut the working yarn. Then you're going to get uh, a yarn needle or whatever you want to use. I'm going to thread my yarn needle, and then I'm going to start the stoop super stretchy cast off you can do the basic bind off if you want whatever bind off you want to do and I'm going to start mine by knitting peg one so there's my first knit stitch on peg one and then with my needle I'm going to the second peg and from the bottom up I'm going to feed that yarn and then I'm going to go back to peg one and from the top coming down I'm going to feed the working yarn. Now that's how I'm going to secure my yarn to do my super stretchy cast off, which I do a little different. So hang tight with me, okay? We're going to work these three pegs right here. We're always working three pegs. And you start off by skipping the second one and going to the third. So here's peg one, two, and three. I skip two, I go to three, and I take my needle from the bottom up. And I feed the yarn and then I go back to that second peg that I skipped and from the top going down I feed that working yarn all right those were the first three sets now I have three new sets so this is my new peg one right there and now these are my three pegs that I'm going to work with. That's peg two and three. So I'm skipping peg two. I'm going to peg three and from the bottom I'm going to feed the working yarn upward and then come back to the peg that I skipped and from the top I'm going to feed down. Now I want to show you a boo-boo that I made and that's right there. You see that? I created a knot. Big mistake because when I did that I secured the yarn to the point where my stitches, I can't tighten them. So I let go of this uh, stitch. I take the stitch off of peg one because I want to tighten uh, these stitches, but they're not tightening. And I didn't notice when I was doing this until later on when I watched the video. So you see me here struggling to tighten the stitches. They're not going to tighten because I created a knot. So don't do that <laughs> because... Unless you notice right away, you're kind of stuck, right? Okay, so now I have a new peg one. I skip peg two. I go to three. And from the bottom, I feed upward. Then I come back to peg two, which is the peg I skipped. And from the top down, I feed the yarn. But this time I know not to make that same mistake and make a knot. And so I feed it through. And again, I'm working... The next three pegs so peg one is where my yarn is but first I take the loop off that second peg because if you leave the loops on while you're doing this your stitches are not as tight so you want to make your stitches nice and tight right all right so let's work the next three pegs I skipped peg two I go to three from the bottom up and then back to the one that I skipped which is peg two and from the top I'm going to go down and you'll see that every time I do this I'm pulling on the yarn and I'm tightening that stitch and the best way to make it stick um, tighten is by removing one of the stitches because if you leave it there your yarn stays stretched if you take that off when you pull see when I pull this it tightens more because I took that loop off and the more you're willing to take off the better so right now um, I'm working on these three pegs right here so I skip peg two I go to three and from the bottom I go up come back to the peg that I skipped and I go from the top down now just continue to do this 
all the way to you've done all of your pegs so here are the last three pegs I'm going to take my um, needle and go up after skipping peg two go to peg three and then come back to peg two from the top come down with the yarn I'm going to feed the yarn through and then I'm going to take off the loop off of that first peg right there so that now I only have loops on two pegs and I keep my yarn tight you see that I go up peg one again go back to that second peg okay take it off so that I only have a loop only on that one peg and I from the bottom I go up and feed the yarn through now I take that loop off and my work is off the loom and you could see here I'm going to show you it's kind of late so there's a lot of light on it and I apologize but you could see um, you can see how nice and neat the edge is right look at that now all you got to do is stretch your stitches so that you could see how beautiful your bind off looks Okay, so hopefully you have stretched all of your stitches and now you're ready for the next part, which is the steam block, the fabric. Now I prefer to use my iron and I prefer to kind of spray a little water, just a little mist on the fabric before I start with my iron. And um, you don't have to steam block, you can wet block. I just find that steam blocking goes much faster and I can finish today, I don't have to worry about tomorrow. So as I add the steam to the fabric, I will shape it, right? I want it to be wider. I want the stitches uh, to be stretched and shaped. And some people will measure as they go and they'll pin um, they'll pin it down. I don't normally pin it down. I don't need it to be exact. So say you're making like a shirt or something, then you need it to be exact because you have two sides. But in this case, it doesn't have to be exact. So I basically just steam it and shape it. And um, I'll put a link in the description to a wet blocking um, video if you don't have an iron. Kristen from Good Knit Kisses did a great, great job with a steam blocking, I'm sorry, with a wet blocking video. And so I'll link you to her. Ignore the little locking stitch marker on my um, scarf. I put one of those every hundred rows just in case something happens. I know um, where it's at. So I should have taken it off, but I didn't. So ignore it. The last thing we're going to do is tighten the stitches and I use the E-wrap because even though this looks the worst right now, it is going to look the best of all the cast on options. So my, loop, my loops look really loose right now, but you'll see that it'll turn out awesome. So the first thing you do is that you look for this end right here and you'll see that there's like a little knot. Um, you're going to pull that strand out of that little knot and don't be worried it's going to be fine it's not going to unravel and by the way you could do this after a few rows you don't have to wait until you're finished if this is really scary get a swatch and try it on a small sample of the fabric all right so once it's done go to the other end and then you're going to pull on that very first loop and um you could see here where I'm going to struggle a little bit is because I'm pulling on the wrong one. So what you have to do is make sure that you're pulling on the correct loop, like right here. See how it then uh, feeds freely and the um, top stitch immediately starts to tighten up. And I'm going to show you at the end how much yarn gets tightened when you do this and like i said you have other options for other cast on and this one looks the worst at the beginning but it looks the best when it's done it has such a beautiful tight cast on um, that i assure you this is your very best option all right as you can see i continue to pull on my loops and when you pull on the loop 
and you pay attention, it will show you where to pull next. And I'm sorry that this one's a little blurry. I should have um, looked a little better. Um, but I think you can see mainly that when I'm pulling on the string, on the loop, it is showing me where. Now look at this uh, cast on and you have to admit that it just looks great, right? But I mean, there are other cast on options like the chain cast on, but with large gauge looms, uh, the result is gonna be much better with this one. So all you're gonna do is continue to pull on these loops Pay attention, see that you can go from the front to the back or the back if you get stuck. And then once you get to your end, if you pull that string out, you're gonna see that it's just going to be a breeze to finish this. And look at how much, all right, here's your end. Look at how much string was extra, right? That's how much, um, how big the loops were. So I put it through that last loop because I'm gonna create a knot and secure my work. And then you can see um, that it's done. And what a big effect, tightening your uh, stitches and blocking your fabric, what a big impact it has. Hey, share this video, it helps me a lot. If you haven't already done so, subscribe. And until next time, when you come back and loom with me, kisses.